Thank you for joining us here on the Pepe Review segment. The Daily Guide, Minister Gives Police Morale, uh, Cops Killer, Killer's House Locked Up, IGP Orders Probe. More trouble for Nam One, slapped with 61 counts. A two for Lunt in US for UN meeting. And no bill for Isiakwa teachers, Killer's. The Daily, Guide, Daily Graphic, I beg your pardon, four auditors sanctioned. They breached auditing principles and uh, police will wield guns. Interior Minister reiterates government's position on duty personnel. State granted requests to amend charges against Men's Gold CEO Nam One. Teachers used resource pack while awaiting textbook. The convention, that's a CPP's baby, uh, it says uh, CPP provides hope. Unbeaten record of the CPP comes the photo of Ivor Green Street, Haji Hamdatu, and uh, lawyer Bright Akwete. And behind, he has uh, six reasons uh, why you should join the CPP. He's talking about CPP, the only party promising to introduce uh, full implementation of employment benefits. He's talking about the only party promising to make job creation sincere and full scale. He's talking about um, uh, payment of uh, introducing free compulsory military training for every Ghanaian to prepare for a disciplined and alert citizenry at all time and many others. So uh, go on the stance and grab a copy of the convention, the CPP's uh, newspaper. The Ghanaian Times, Nam One slapped with 61 charges for allegedly defrauding customers of 1.68 billion Ghana cities. Use digital innovations to boost farming in Africa. Be law abiding and support national development. Bamba Chief and one more Adenta Madina Highway footbridge com completed. Okay. BNFT. Um, taxpayers in the dark, screaming headline, cost of SNL finance houses, uh, the savings and loans of finance houses clean up unknown. Cash for NTEs to increase under the African Free Trade Agreement. And the Finder newspaper, the final one, so maximize digital technology to drive agriculture for Poverty alleviation, Dr. Baumia is uh, calling on all of us too. And media must mobilize a positive vote for MMDC's elections, GJ. And KNUSC campus declared security zone over fears of disturbances. 45-year-old quack doctor arrested in Tamale and GCB awarded best bank in Africa for compliance. My guest this morning, Mr. Richard Ahiagba, he is uh, Deputy Communications Director of the NPP. Lawyer Duji Tamaklo is also a member of the NDC's communication team. And Madame Rhoda Murayana uh, is a former top executive of the CPP. Welcome, lady and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, let's start from South Africa. The xenophobia is on again. Our high commission there says, so far, no attack has come to any Ghanaian. But the question is, must we wait? Richard. Well, uh... Johnny, good morning to you and uh, to my co-panelists here. <clears throat> and permit me also to say a special good morning to His Excellency the President. Uh, yesterday, inaugurated a board for SIGA. Uh, we wish them well uh, to be in a position to advance the vision uh, of that uh, organization and ensure that Ghanaians benefit, uh, as the President anticipates, for uh, creating them the work they will do to advance the interest of Ghanaians. Um, uh, Singa, I, I've seen the composition of the board, and I'm thinking the president is littered all through the act and even the composition of the board. So literally, like, everything must be, you know, reference to the president. Some kind, I, I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm just thinking. Uh, well, I've seen the it, yellow, the yellow yes. act. Oh, you I've have. read it okay. back okay. and forward. Okay. You have issues with it or not? Yes, I think that the president is all related to, especially if SIGA is supposed to be ensuring that our state-owned enterprises are not sold into privacy, mm -hmm. but we have a, an active public-private partnership, mm -hmm. and to ensure that you know you don't have a lot of monkey hands in the dark, uh, pulling and declaring losses and all of that. I think that the independence of the board should have been very profound. Don't you think so? Well, I, I think, I think uh, the board as constituted uh, is, is as independent as can be. So uh, the only uh, thing is for us all to push for their success at okay. this point. So, okay. Um, uh, but South Africa, um, I, it's, it's very surreal just uh, on listening and kind of pondering what is happening. Uh, it makes me wonder if ever... Uh, we will overcome. Uh, Why the, do you think so? Uh, the fight that uh, our forebears put in to mm -hmm. ensure 
we are here uh, as a <coughs> continent, and most especially South Africa, their pursuit of independence and uh, to rid themselves of the very terrible apartheid regime, which all of us uh, uh, supported in fighting, I think the, the world at large, but Africa most especially, mm -hmm. uh, to see South Africa uh, and most especially the black people in South Africa behave the way they are behaving toward their fellow Africans, for me, is okay. sickening. Uh, it is in the least bit inhumane. Mm. And I, I want all of Africa to condemn that. Mm. And even if the U, uh, UN must intervene to ensure mm. that South Africa's place in uh, the organization is defined to mean that they must promote okay. the African interest, including mm all Africans present in South Africa. I cannot begin to understand why mm. you would do what you're doing in South Africa. And uh, I, I, the least said about it, the better. I mm. want to also commend the, uh, the authorities in Nigeria mm. uh, uh, for trying to calm uh, their own citizens to not retaliate because two wrongs don't make a right in the, this case. I'm told that reprisal attacks have started already. Uh, but from official uh, communication, the president and then the leadership of the country are urging calm mm -hmm. uh, in, to ensure that they don't go on the rampage as has been done in South Africa. Because if all of us join hands in condemning South Africa, uh, it will not be right for them to, to do so. Mm -hmm. But the loss there is grave. And we must uh, stand to ensure that this thing is not accepted. This, this, is, not, this is not the first time this is this is has happened, and it's been condemned, you know, overboard. I remember the first instance Nigeria sent an envoy there, mm. just as it's done in recent time. But it, nothing is deterring the South Africans from uh, yeah. perpetrating this utter nonsense. Yeah, jo uh, Johnny, you know they, that's where we need to take it to the next level to actually begin to look at the UN to see where South Africa actually finds itself okay. or what it thinks of itself in the larger scheme mm. of the African agenda. Right. If they think they belong, if they think they are part of what we're trying to build in Africa, mm. then they must begin to act appropriately at home. Mm. Talking is not enough. This thing has carried on one too many times and it's not funny. Mm. You understand? And I thank our government also. Uh, I think our, our rep there has issued uh, uh, a statement that he yes, mm -hmm. has issued a, a statement to calm up our Ghanaian people. We're thankful that nothing untoward has happened to our people, and we urge that they will continue to conduct themselves as responsible mm -hmm. African citizens in an African uh, country and on an African continent to ensure that they mm -hmm. go about their businesses uh, in peace to contribute to the domestic well being of South Africa right. and back home here. Too. Council, the allegation is that we're taking their jobs from them. And uh, only 20% of the population in South Africa are South Africans. The rest are foreigners. And we are the ones who are coming in with the big degrees and expertise and taking away all the jobs that they could have gotten. What do you say? OK. Um, so good morning to my senior brother here and uh, my own mother. Exactly. And, our, our and mother. your production team. <laughs> um, what's important in all of this conversation is that we are dealing with economics. Mm. The whole fight is reducible to economic opportunities. True. And in this particular instance, we are aware of the South African problem. It's quite unique within the African continent, mm. where you have blacks in their own country. Okay. However, in terms of opportunities, mm. avenues, they are more, quote unquote, foreigners, mm. having access to economic giants. Mm than the indigenous people. And so, for instance, you go to South Africa, and uh, before the apartheid and subsequently apartheid, you have the, 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 you, you, you have the likes of the black empowerment mm. movement mm. to move real empowerment into the realms of economics. Because if this whole fight is really about economics and economic opportunities, mm. then we need to find um, you know, a certain way to leverage on that. Mm -hmm. And that makes this particular xenophobic attack very, very distasteful. How do we need to go about it? Under no circumstance, first of all, must we even encourage that. Look, our Nigerian brothers, Ghanaian brothers, when they go outside, mm -hmm. they work themselves to, in fact, to the very minimum 
they do everything and anything. Mm. When you go to South Africa, most of the barbering shops are operated by Ghanaians. True. Cleaning. They are doing almost everything just to make ends meet. But the South Africans believe that South Africa belongs to them. So they must work. So they won't do those kind of work. Mm. And the Ghanaian is willing and available. The Nigerian is willing and available to do those kinds of work. Mm. And that is where the problem is coming from. I will not sit here and say xenophobic attack is something limited to South Africa. Mm. We have had our own xenophobic attacks where our own Ghanaian brothers and sisters mm. had had cause to go and lock up Nigerian shops mm. and what have you. It's all part of the xenophobic attack. The whole idea of a xenophobic attack is that you are targeting a particular race, a particular group, a particular distance, just for the purpose of even attack. Are you, or are you putting the law in context, the law that says uh, some jobs are reserved no, for the indigenous? No, no. That is why we have law enforcement officers. Mm. If a Nigerian is engaged in anything illegal, they are processed for due process in this country. So what do you do? You allow the police, law enforcement agencies to deal with it. Mm. As soon as you now target a particular nationality for the purpose of attack, okay. purely on the basis of <laughs> economics, you have moved into the realms of xenophobic attack. So I'm saying that whilst we are condemning the mm. South African situation, we must mm. know that we've had our own kinds of xenophobic attack. Look, South Africa, if you look at the record, International Student Hostel, mm -hmm. the Osage for right. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. The whole idea of the International Student Hostel was to house some of these South Africans. Mm. In fact, for many years, there were South Africans that were using Ghanaian passports. Most of their freedom fighters, mm. the Nelson Mandela, the Teb uh, Oliver, Oliver, Oliver Tambo, and the rest, Malema. all those big guys, at one point or the other, they had to use either a Nigerian passport, a Ghanaian passport, to permit them to freely move within the continent to, to engage in this freedom mm. fighting agenda. So if today, after almost 60 years, 50 years, 40 years, mm. the very people who helped you in your economic emancipation, mm. political emancipation, you not take, you know, turn the gun on them. Mm. Then it's like biting the very finger that, you know. Uh, 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 and Richard raises a question about them recognizing their place within the League of Nations First and whether all, they, the feel, they feel part of the African No, the, no, no, the African South Africans formation have what they call the rainbow colors. Right. Mm -hmm. It is to, it, it, that color is symbolic. Mm. It tells you that this is a country that we admit persons of every color. That's why we call them the rainbow nation. Mm. So if you are a rainbow nation, what it means is that you have a special place mm. within the continent of Africa. And so where with all of this, you will still proceed in this manner. I strongly believe that there is a critical leadership failure. And mm. I think that President Cyril must take this matter up. Look, MTN is owned by him. Right. Mobile telecommunication company, mm. uh, uh, network, is owned by Ram him. Ramaphosa, right. Cyril. And look at how MTN is doing well in this country. Look at how MTN is doing well in Nigeria. ShopRite and all of those things. Yeah, they are Ghanaian ownership mm. in terms of the structures exactly. of all these yeah. companies, mm. okay? But this is a South African company that is doing well within the continent of Africa. So under no circumstance mm. whatsoever should we have a situation where you, 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 you effectively would have to be providing a certain safe places for mm. Ghanaians, Nigerians. Where, where should we go national. from here? No, what we can do mm. is that the African Union must issue a very strong statement, first of all, condemning and holding mm. the government of South Africa responsible because under international law, conducts of this nature mm. can effectively become the responsibility of the government of South Africa. Because mm. you see, Fair safety, right. the peaceful living, 
of Ghanaians in South Africa, okay, Nigerians in South Africa. Yeah. It's the responsibility of the government of South Africa and mm. no one else. Mm. So where you cannot provide this critical safety net for other nationals in South Africa, okay. it becomes the responsibility of the government of South Africa. Mm. And I've heard South African officials make comments that rather incite mm. South Africans against other nationals. That's terrible. We should not encourage it. But you see, okay. just give me one word. There is an issue that you raise critical, mm. which has to do with SIGA. And this SIGA arrangement, government had indicated that it's an arrangement to combine the State Enterprises Commission mm. and the Diversity and Implementation right. Commission. Mm. But you, you ask a very critical question. You see the president mm. all over the enactment. Mm. Now, if we are saying that the SOEs have failed over mm. the period mm. because they are declaring losses, they are doing all those things, and so we need a new vehicle to ensure that these state enterprise, uh, you know, state-owned agencies will not be loss makers. Mm. And then you still have the president effectively in charge of everything, the composition of the board. Mm. The other day, I gave a classic example. Mm -hmm. If government at the end of the day would interfere in ensuring that we do not have appropriate tariffs mm. regime, then we'll come back to a situation where the energy SOEs will come back and say, look, we have declared losses. Mm. We have declared this level of losses because government's intervention. So we'll be creating vehicles. Mm. By the end of the day, the problem still exists. Richard says no cause for alarm. Anyway, we'll I'm just, you know. <laughs> and I've heard Mr. Sivna Samabwati <laughs> say the same thing. No, so. The man moves from State Enterprise Commission to NS. So, so, so let's let's indulge and let Madam have, have have a bite on uh, the the situation in South Africa, and then you can come back, Richard. I'll, I'll give you yeah, the space, the, Madam. The, good morning um, mm. to our viewers and everyone out there. The situation in South Africa is not good. Um, if we're looking historically at what Africans all over have done for South Africa, mm. I don't think we deserve what we're getting from South Africa. But then I've heard people also say that. Um, it's the situation at home, which okay. is true, okay. because our governments have failed us. If we had been able to um, create the right environment, give right. opportunities to our young people okay. and to our citizens, they would not be going to places where they will be attacked. Okay. So the same goes also for the South African government, mm. because it means that they have also not been able to provide for their citizens, and okay. therefore their mm. citizens are taking it out on foreigners. It's okay. not just the Africans, they, they are attacking the Asians as well because most, most of the um, food shops are owned by Asians. Um, we're looking at a situation where the average um, age of the South African now that um, post uh, apartheid is about okay. 25 years. Right. So they're young people. They do not know anything about history. They, they haven't read? They have, well, um, let's. Or they let's, haven't been taught in school? Yes, that's, <laughs> that, that, that is the whole thing. They've not been taught in school. Just okay. as we have not taught our own mm. in our schools to even appreciate the other African uh, continents. Um, we're looking at, um, uh, or countries, we're looking at a situation where the Osajifo, in his candid opinion mm -hmm. felt that there was that need for the African um, integration, there was that need for the African unification. Okay. Probably if we had gone along that path, we wouldn't be where we are. We would have understood each other better. Mm -hmm. We would have known that these things do happen because we are the same people. Right. But this is a situation where we are so divided. We have uh, 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 our own West African Union, we, then we have the, the, the SEDEC communities, then mm -hmm. we have all those mm -hmm. others. Everybody's divided mm -hmm. along a certain line. So when you look at the economic situation, situations that um, happen in these countries, by all means, the youth will start to talk. Just like we, like he said, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, Edgy said, you're looking at the way we attacked Nigerians. It was because we felt that they were taking the jobs from us. Mm -hmm. That's how it's, it's become. But the question is this. This thing is happening in South Africa. And I ask myself, what can we do as a country? Can we boycott South African goods? And I asked, I said, what happens to MTN? I wouldn't be talking to somebody this morning. Mm -hmm. What happens to, to the Momo? People might not be getting their money this morning. Mm -hmm. So the question again comes to me that, as Ghanaians, mm -hmm. is this something that we can take lessons from? Is it a wake-up call mm -hmm. that we should start building our own 
Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if anything happens and we, we decide to take any action, we shouldn't be looking back and seeing or asking ourselves, how is it going to affect us? We should be able at this moment to reach out to the South African government without any fear right. of losing out on any grounds. Mm -hmm. But at this moment, we can't do it. The same with Nigeria. Nigeria has about 120 very big South African companies. Right. The, the, the youth are up in arms against those the, the, the government. Mm -hmm. They are up in arms against the people. But what can they do? Because that group there is also employing Nigerians. So we have um, a, a banking se sector that is almost all foreign mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. We have a communication sector that is also owned by other people apart from us. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, let's start asking questions. Our people no, are going to continue. <laughs> they are going to continue going out. But what do we do as a country to keep them in? Is that not why the president says Ghana beyond eight and uh, and all of that? Well, Ghana it, beyond it doesn't it doesn't cut it for you. No, it doesn't cut it because you see Ghana beyond eight. Yes, um, beyond what eight? We're still collecting loans. And, and, and where are the industries? Where are the job openings? Where are those opportunities for young people? Our people are still going across the desert. If the opportunities are there, people would not, young people will not go. If you looked at the, 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 the clips that were being shown on Al Jazeera and all the rest, you see young people, these are young people, they're crying out for something to do, for their livelihood, and we can't deliver it. So it is not a question of Ghana beyond aid. Ghana beyond aid means giving the opportunity opportunities for people to be able to live okay you see so these are some of the things so okay. we have to look at this thing and not criticize the south africans so much mm. because we have created that problem also the, the for our people rwandan to president is pulled out of uh, an in, impending conference uh democratic republic of congo have also pulled out You'll and they say game yes yes South a friendly case yeah. yeah they say well it's, it will not happen again unless you stop this is that is that enough to to uh, awaken them um it might not be enough because um Kigami has done that because I think he's head of AU now. Yeah. And um, if you look at DR Congo, they're very close to them. They have a lot of migrant workers because of right. the mines and all right. that. So they, they will by all means say those things. But it is left to us. We are, the, we are what you call the beacon of hope. And when it comes to the African personality, the African emancipation struggle, it is us. We should be able to reach out now and issue our very strong statements. If possible, we must call out the um, South African ambassador okay. and, and, and have a say. We must be able to do something. Okay. I think if, if we follow the line of uh, Kagame, um, it won't be wrong. Okay, Richard, you had a, a quick intervention. Oh, yeah, just a, a small one on the on the SIGA matter. Okay. I think that uh, I hear my brother uh, what he's saying, but clearly uh, the situation we had before didn't help. Uh, <laughs> and there's uh, state uh, organizations, there are quasi-fiscal agencies that uh, their performance, uh, if they are, you know, returning profits, impact the fiscal position of the government, and their failure to do so affect the fiscal position. When they were in office, they couldn't see that as a specific vehicle mm. to try to improve the fiscal, you know, situation of the country. We see that as inherent mm. and consistent with what you are just you have just introduced, uh, Ghana Beyond Aid. If we are seeking truly to achieve that vision, which I know and I agree with, Madam, that is good. Uh, and in, the, in view of everything we're talking about now, then we need to be creative in ensuring that every tool or every agency that is operating for the interest of the people of Ghana are doing so at optimum level. And I think that that's what the president is seeking to I, do. I asked, Mr. I asked Mr. Stephen oh. Asamoa Boating, uh, Rich, I asked Mr. Stephen Asamoa Boating, who is the, the boss there, <laughs> about the, the number of SOEs that we have. Mm -hmm. And he had earlier said, you know, that it, it doesn't make sense for the state to want to manage all about 44 SOEs on their own. So we need to bring in the public-private partnership. And I'll ask him, how many of the 44 is government going to hold on to? And how many is government to give out? The answer is, is Mr. yet to come. Mr. Oh, Mr. oh no, that, that's my question yeah. to oh, Stevie. Yeah. <laughs> the, to, to, to Richard. <laughs> do, do, do you want to swap <laughs> places? Alive, alive. White and cream, white and cream are close together. So it's <laughs> you know, the, um, that question, I think that um, would be strategic. Mm -hmm. And then answering that question will actually be driven by what interest and what outcome we're seeking. So if uh, uh, he didn't answer the question straight away, uh, it is because it cannot be simply answered that way. Okay. So I am, I am trying to have us look 
at a viewpoint that is calculated to mm -hmm. ensure that Ghana is benefiting. Okay. And let's look at it. Now, of course, the skepticism and probably uh, the, 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 the concerns that my brother is raising that you legitimately may mm -hmm. raise is all, all aimed at ensuring that at least we take into account okay. every perspective. So for me, I don't have any problem okay. with that. But uh, at heart, we must admit mm. that this effort is calculated okay. to give Ghana best returns because what we have mm. or what we had mm. did not produce the results we wanted. No, not, okay. No, just, so, just so, for the record, mm. oh. ECG, as of 2016, mm. ECG was making profits. Today, as we speak, mm. because of tariff issues, ECG is now a loss maker, mm. and not only a loss maker, we have PDS, VRA, Gridco, all these agencies, because of the same government interference. So, but, so but, you but, put, but, but, hold on, no. so you I put mean, up a cigar, you put up cigar mm. yeah. with Asamoa Boateng, moving from State mm. Enterprise Commission, which was to do the very one, same work, yeah. he now comes back yeah. to cigar. And you put the same man in charge. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that now that I'm with this SIGA, I can better perform than when I was with State we, Enterprise. Within a certain legal ah, framework. Yeah, yes. legal framework. Oh, look, Edwin, State, you, Enterprise Commission, oh, okay. State Enterprise Commission is constitutionally created. Okay. Now you are saying that the one that constitutionally is created is less powerful vehicle than what Parliament, through legislation, had put in place. I am saying that bringing Asamoah Boateng from uh, 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 State no. Enterprise Commission and Energy. now to SIGA, yeah. <laughs> what difference have you made? Let's be honest. Johnny, our president has Energy, lost the Energy. plot. Let me, clear, let me clear this with you. <laughs> okay. And then, so, so, Johnny, then you can move so, on. So I'm asking, I want yes. to ask a, There's nothing a simple for you question. To clear. I, I want to ask a GD a simple question. Very There's well. a new legal framework, uh -huh. and you say this, this is not good enough. Yes. But for example, if you look at and my problem with ECG and Ghana what I say, you have leakages. Yes. You have illegal Absolutely. connections. Mm -hmm. Solve those problems Good. and stop running to PURC every time to say, increase no. my tariff. No. Very well. No. <laughs> if, which, if, which, if, will if on, know, which will be passed on to, no. to the customer. See, when, when, this, when this so, agency, so now, so now government says SIGA is going to have an eagle eye to, please, to look you know, into you it and say, something. perform your function. You know something. As we speak, for instance, ECG is gone. It's okay. now PDS. What is SIGA going to do with PDS? It does not fall within your mandate. Mm. So you have nothing to do. Okay. But tariff issues will come up. The question of grid code. Oh. Grid code's line loss. Edwin, please is, don't hijack the show. Oh, okay. no, no. Yeah, you are. But you see, you know <laughs> from the data, available data, that okay. is why I'm saying that. Mm. When the state stop interfering politically, okay. yeah. the board... The CEOs Look. are appointed by who? His Excellency, the President. Mm. And now you are blaming the inefficiency, online losses, and what have you. The person is controlling. And that is see, why you cleverly ask him the question. Okay. The President is all over the no, place. No, no. That was it. Okay, you know. so he said he's standing Johnny, now. yes. Oh, no, he please. Said he's oh, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, the, the, the truth of the matter is you see, he's talking about ECG and all of that. Mm. ECG, if well, ECG was making profit, they, they started to move to switch. To the PPA agreement uh, with uh, with ECG, mm. understand? Mm. So if he was making profit, why were you making that move? So the question is the question of SIGA. Okay. It is not what he's trying to claim. It is to streamline and coordinate. Okay. So don't make it about Mr. Samar Boateng. No, but over. what? It is okay. oh, please, 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 okay. When you were talking, I was quiet. Ellis, quiet. So the point is <laughs> now we have a leaner and a more focused, no. a more focused organization okay. that is going to drive us to that. Because, because you see, Johnny, clearly, clearly, there cannot be any dispute. There cannot be any dispute that state organizations under the uh, the previous arrangement were returning losses. Yeah. And if you want to move forward. With the same structure, which continuously yeah, and that was because of the same that was and that was because of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh, please, 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 oh, please, 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 please. It has nothing to do with Mr. Samabati. Please don't be injecting. No, no, no. no, 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 no you know, you know, know about interference. I understand. So what we have now is a structured, you know, board and a CEO to ensure that we achieve the objective which the previous... And, 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 and I'm suggesting to you that, look, the composition of the board yeah. 
and even yes, those who will serve the on, yes. on, the, so, on the executive committee of yes. SIGA uh -huh. are all bowing to the president. Exactly. The president is littered all over the act. Yes. And that for me is a problem. It's a problem. Because if they can't have independence you to can run. You can see this. Okay, wait. So, then, so Johnny, it it's a problem, a problem to the extent that they would be more efficient. Less. Less. Oh, no, 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 please, please, please. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Listen to what I'm saying. I mean, are we saying that it's a problem to the extent that SIGA under the current arrangement, will be more effective, efficient, and return profit? Is that why we're saying it's no, a problem? We're, so that is what the government is proposing until, to us. Uh -huh. so but we're saying that the, this, the black and white print in the act, yes. if the president is littered all over the place, yes. where is the independence of this board? That's and, the question. And I hear your question, but I am trying to ask you, that if to the extent of what you have concerns about, if that is leading us to return efficiency, effectiveness, and profit, where lie your problem? Because what you had before was returning losses. Okay. Your point is well made. Let's go to page 16 of the Daily Graphic, where the uh, Interior Minister says the police will wield guns. And this is a quote from him. He says, uh, he was reacting to criticisms about this new directive. He says, I will want to make it clear that under President Akufuado, we shall not send out a policeman unprotected unarmed and helpless to be slaughtered by criminals and senseless elements in society. That will not happen. This is the uh, instructive uh, decision of the uh, Interior Minister, Mr. Ambrose Deli, Deli, when he took a trip to uh, Sunyani some place to go and inspect whether they had gotten their bulletproof vest and all of that. There are two schools of thought. Mm. One that says, look, already the police, they are intimidating. Uh, so if you give them guns now, you are going to worry us. The other school of thought says, look, give them guns so that when they come face to face with miscreants, they can finish them. Adam, where do you stand? Um, is it the police or the traffic police, MM, uh, MTTD? MTTD? Yeah, so MTTD, yes. It, but but he's talking about the fact that generally, generally the police you, are won't armed send, anyway. you won't send police out not but to be Generally, when police go out, they are armed. What I, I, I know is that they are asking that the M MTTD MTT. should be given guns. And I've, I've asked for that and too, but... Uh, I, I don't think that is the right thing. You see, we... we Why we, is it not? No, first and foremost, let's look at our training schedule for, for our, our police. Okay. Um, do we think that the training that they're giving uh -huh. is up to standards? Okay. That's the first question. Let's look at the qualifications that people take to enter the police service. Okay. Are we doing the right thing? So much so that of late you might even find people who might not be able to write their names mm. because of something we call protocol right. lists. Okay. Then we're looking at a situation where the person that you are giving the gun to is not even well looked after. Mm. Have, you, have you dressed up the police okay. to have confidence in himself? The logistics. Okay. It is not about cars. You and I know that the police as we have them now, mm. do not even have a good place to sleep, to lay their heads. Mm. If you get up in the morning and you've not had a good night's sleep, you are grotty all through. Okay. Um, if the president should look across from mm. where he lives at uh, uh, Nima mm. or Rich to the Nima police station, he will find deep freezers and all manner of things on corridors. Police people sleep indoors and their children sleep on those. I, I've, seen, I've seen at Nima they are putting up a structure. Yeah, they're the putting patient. up a structure. Yes, That's I've what I'm that. saying. So at the end of the day, those are the things that would ginger them up okay. to, to, to give off their best and to be able to talk. To, because you see, our, our reflection of the police, when you see a policeman that is well-dressed, well mm. well-disciplined, well-trained, you respect the person. Right. You understand? Suddenly you realize that this is a professional person. But then when you, you meet a policeman with um, a, a torn uh, uh, police uniform, worn out boots, um, and kept, you know, the person does not exude any confidence. And therefore, when you look at the person, you just feel like, who is this person? <laughs> you, Sorry about that. No, but that's how it is. Sorry. So at the end of the day, the driver, the truck driver or the taxi driver will talk to him anyhow. Mm. Why don't we talk that way to the military? Even if it's just a private soldier. The respect a private soldier has mm. or gets from the, uh, the populace is totally different from even an inspector of right. the police. Right. It means that there is something fundamentally wrong. It is not arming them that will do the trick. And then we also know that the police happen to have the guns, and we know the armed robbers are always taking the guns from the police. Mm. I shudder to think of what is going to happen when armed robbers get hold of bulletproof vests. And I don't think bulletproof vests are cheap. Mm, they are not. They are not. Yes. 
Probably the, 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 the latest ones that are coming are lightweight, maybe, but the one I've won before is not lightweight. Right. For you to be able to run after anybody or take any, uh, any move, mm -hmm. you know, feel free to move in. So when we are talking, let's be practical about things. The police are always giving guns to go on, 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 on patrols. They're giving guns when they have to go and make some arrests. They're giving guns when they're called out. So you don't support the MTTD? I, I, I don't. Guns. I don't support. I think they could be giving pepper sprays. They could be giving whistles. They could be giving walkie-talkies to call for more reinforcement. Mm -hmm. I think the visibility that okay. the NDC introduced right. worked also. Okay. So okay. we could have more visibility within mm -hmm. the police service. Mm -hmm. But to arming them... I don't think that's the right thing to do. Council. Yes. Uh, should we or should we not? The I, I, minister I, I, says I, 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 it will I, I, not happen. Johnny, Johnny, you see, the, the problem is simple. We are basically misdiagnosed the problem. Look, in this particular instance where mm. the two police officers were shot right. by the suspect now, Eric right. Duya, mm. if you look at the narration, mm -hmm. what it means is that after their encounter with him, mm. He allegedly said he was going to pick something from his car. Right. From nowhere, mm. he shot the two police officers, right? Now, if the police officers were armed, within that instance, what could they have done to stop it? Absolutely nothing. Right. So, we have a problem. Mm. Let's deal with the crime of mm. killing a police or police officers mm. as a crime and deal with it than being emotional. Right. Because immediately you become emotional with a problem. You start all these problems of misdiagnosis. Look, we've had situations in this country. You remember the Taifa incident? Mm, mm, you remember mm, that incident? Mm, back in the day. Back in the days mm. when those so-called uh, vigilantes exactly. were gunned down. Mm. Was it not the police? Were they not armed? What became of it? I do not think that the current problem we are faced with mm. requires simply arming them. Mm. You can arm a police officer to the teeth, mm. and you will still be gunned down. Oh, yeah. So that's not the solution. Okay. I believe that maybe if you say they should have their bulletproof on, mm. that's better. Right. But arming them to show what? Okay. Uh, well, I'm sure that you... And, and, and like my mom made a point. Look, we need to have the police visibility thing back, back. on our street. Right. And look, under They have over 500 new vehicles now provided under by Mr. the... Under Al Hansa, so. almost every corner, 200, 300 meters, you see a police officer. Right. And like it happens outside, just a phone call, the police will just be there. We can do that here. Yes, we know our roads have a bit problematic. Well, we can get it. But arming them immediately, I don't think is the solution to this problem. Okay. Richard, Johnny, take a uh, bite on this yes, one. Yes, certainly. I would just uh, commend uh, the police uh, authorities and all the security agencies that supported them to uh, arrest, I think, the three people suspected in the murder or killing of uh, the police officers in Kaswa. Um, and all of Ghanaians mm. who, I'm sure, in diverse ways supported that enterprise. Uh, I'm also at this point uh, to encourage uh, the individuals, including the Minister for Interior and the police authorities, to uh, continue to explore all mm. the available options to ensure that they arrive at a solution that is workable, mm -hmm. that is practical and efficient, mm -hmm. and able to strengthen the policing of our communities and uh, uh, ensure that Ghanaians rest in the understanding that they are safe mm -hmm. and continue to be safe in doing their business. Are we misdiagnosing the, the situation like A2G said? No, I don't think so. I think we're, Niger, we're, Niger. Uh, uh, I don't think so. I think we're in a phase where uh, we're exploring uh, what mm. options best works for us. Mm. Traditionally, the MTTD uh, police officers always go out uh, unarmed, and it has become part of our, uh, the way we know them to do business. And uh, if certain things are going on, okay. and it calls for us to take a second look, mm. I, 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 I understand that to mean an exploratory stage where every option is on the table to see mm -hmm at the end of the day, what is more practical. Right. So what we are doing now is exploring those options and, I, and, and exploring, oh. exploring mm -hmm. uh, options. Mm -hmm. And I think that what suggestions you are making, what suggestion Madame is making, mm -hmm. I think the authorities are also thinking about those or take those if okay. uh, they have not thought about them already to input them and see that in the end, 
what would best serve the interest of Ghanaians. And I think that that's where the focus should be. And let's try to be individuals who are contributing uh, our little insights to the bigger conversation and they maybe, if you like, call it a, a policy position for the police service okay. to ensure that they continue to do the work they are tasked to do for all of Ghana. Great. So Crystal is ready with some messages. Uh, Crystal, welcome back. Thank what you. are they saying? What's up? Very, very interesting comments here. Um, one says, true peace is not merely the absence of tension. It is the presence of... Okay. Pardon me? Technology. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Technology. Okay. Um, I take that again. It says, true peace is not merely the absence of tension. It is the presence of justice. Martin Luther King Jr. The right thing must be done as a country or else as Ghanaians or citizens we as Ghanaians or citizens would suffer, suffer the most. Our leaders should be pro proactive when it comes to security issues, please. Good morning from Frederick Aqua from Obuase. From teacher constitution, we are Muase. Where is former President Mahama? What is he saying about the xenophobic attack in South Africa? He, the only thing he knows is doing propaganda in order to become okay. Um, that's from NDC opposition. He has said something about it in the past, so let's give him time. Maybe he will speak about it um, this time around. What is the essence of Africans being united if some see themselves superior to the other? These inhumane treatments meted out to Africans living in South Africa is becoming too many, and a hefty sanction must be triggered against the country. Diplomacy is in issues like this embolden these people to contribute to continue their despicable and hatred agenda against the feeble foreigners. From Kwesi Reynolds in Agona, Odo Ben. From Pajo of Big Joe Shoes, um, thank God Nam once um, slapped with 61 charges for allegedly defrauding customers of 1.6 um, billion Ghana CDs. We can't suffer in our own country, but we must all condemn the xenophobic attack going on in South Africa. Hi to, okay, shout out, <laughs> Mame. South Africa has destroyed some of Africa's biggest um, businesses and it's very, very mean of them. The xenophobic attack in South Africa isn't different from attacks on political opponents here in Ghana, especially whenever there, um, there's mere change of political power. Even today, public or civil servants perceived to be political opponents are suffering in silence in Kwame Nkrumah's Ghana. Let's deal with ours first before we blame others. King from um, last um, penultimate God good morning mr. host the president um, Ghana beyond aid is just a rhetoric from echo if Kuma and um, Takaradi and the last comments for this morning AU Farouk Tamale North constituency good morning it is sad what is happening in South Africa regards to attacks on fellow African colleagues it is indeed really sad <sighs> well, sad it is, uh, Crystal. Thank you very much for your time. We'll get some more of your messages and read them as we make progress. But uh, let's turn attention now to page three of the BNFT, where taxpayers are in the dark. That's the screaming headline. It says, it's been more than two weeks since the revocation of licenses for 23 finance houses and savings and loans uh, companies. But the finance ministry and central bank are yet to inform Ghanaians as to how much taxpayers' monies will be spent to pay off depositors and strengthen existing institutions from the finance ministry and central bank's own precedents when licenses are revoked information is immediately provided either through a media release or press conference as to how much it will cost the taxpayer and through which means the capital will be raised to take care of the depositors and strengthen existing institutions when the licenses of UT and capital banks were revoked in August of 2017 the central bank announced an issuance of bonds to cover the cost and allow GCB bank to uh, Assume the ownership of selected assets and liabilities of the two banks. The cost to the taxpayer was at least some 2.4 billion CDs. And it goes on and on and on. Richard, why don't we know how much this is costing us uh, this time around? Your, your example in the past has been great indeed. You, you, uh, where are the figures? Johnny, uh, the issue uh, to do with the larger restructuring going on in our banking sector or financial sector, it's... Uh, uh, is one that uh, all of us must follow with keen interest, and I uh, I welcome the the views that has been expressed, but uh, uh, also will caution that uh, uh, we should not try to get ahead of the process. Uh, in, in in the moment, two that, weeks. Uh, well, uh, I remember when the the Bank of Ghana, the UT Capital Bank, 
that very afternoon we were told how much it was going to cost. Yeah. When the seven banks went, we were told how much it was going to cost. Yeah. So I, I, I have no um, uh, illusion of the fact that the appropriate uh, time will come for that information to be disclosed. And for us, we must understand that this is a process uh, that is being crafted uh, in a way that uh, at the end of the day, Ghana and Ghanaians will benefit out of it. So it's a painful process. Uh, it's a very uh, difficult uh, undertaking. So let's allow time. Uh, I don't think, uh, based on your very good example, that prior uh, the numbers were put out. And if it's not being put out today, then perhaps it's just on account of the fact that uh, there are some considerations that has to go before that. And if you look at the experience and the, uh, the performance in the past, mm -hmm. you understand that it, when the time is right, uh, that information will be shared. Uh, the very person that we're praising to have done it in the past are the same people in charge, and uh, they would uh, make the appropriate announcement. So for me, let's not uh, uh, get ahead of the process. Let's okay. move with the process and be vigilant uh, and, and focused, as the president uh, invited all of us to do uh, in his uh, inaugural address. We'll continue to be good citizens and focused to, to contribute our best uh, in ways that supports and move the government's agenda forward. So I, I just would urge that people uh, move the process, not get ahead of the process. Council, yes, what uh, do you see to be the difficulty? You know, you know in, in, <coughs> consistent in, in with it, yesterday the minority in parliament actually had a press uh, briefing which was carried by your right. very important right. station. I mean, it's becoming very clear that this whole banking sector cleanup, mm. first, it's an ad hoc thing. It was not well thought through. The Bank of Ghana disagrees. I'm coming. So it was never well thought through. Government, just consistent with its conduct over the period, knee jerk. Mm -hmm. And the problem we are having to face today is that we have collapsed indigenous capital formation mm -hmm. in the name of banking sector cleanup, where there are demonstrable evidence of better alternative to achieve the same end. And that is why you collapse 24 microfinance institution, there are significant job losses, and you are now going out there to look for funds. What vehicle to even use to raise funds to do this? Let us always know that the way businesses are done in this country, mm. they are done with interconnection. So it will interest you to note that you have a bank, the bank is connected to a radio station, a TV station, or something. So at the end, once you, you, you take the plug off, like okay. a breadwinner in the house, mm. you create cascading effects. This government never thought about it. Okay. They were just in a hurry to destroy indigenous businesses in the name of banking sector cleanup. Mm. And so we have a situation where the amount of money government claims is using in this so-called cleanup mm. is becoming a bottomless pit. Today we are told 12 billion, mm. another day 18 billion, two days 23 billion. And so the figure keeps increasing simply because someone did not sit down mm. to really think through what is the cost. In any case, Johnny, if you want to build, the first thing you ask yourself will be the estimates mm. before you even start the building project. But this our president, he does the building and now begin to ask for estimates. And that is what has, if you look at all his programs, that is why he does. No costing, he does it and now begin to look for the cost. What kind of autopilot administration do we have? But even more important, do you know that immediately our president declared Ghana beyond aid? My thinking is that that is where you use programs, policies to strengthen mm. indigenous businesses. So even if they were on the wrong side of the law? No. Even if they are on the wrong side of the law, mm. there are always remedial measures. Like what? Like Sorry. somebody uses a fraudulent document to acquire banking licenses. Now come to think of Somebody's it. Somebody's been no, under declaring they don't the have other their reserves intact. The other day when I about this so-called claim that people use fraudulent mm. documents. In fact, two of the banks that had their license, perpetual license, under this administration, Construction Bank mm. and I think Beige Bank, mm. the vice president and Dr. Addison actually went there and cut the whole process. Because the process had been kick-started no, under you. No, no. 
and then you give them perpetual license. Okay. If there was any problem, you do what is called due diligence. Right. Before even going there with the vice president, mm -hmm. you go there and then later come out and say, oh, we have subsequently detected. What due diligence informed the initial decision to go there to cut this off? So immediately our president said, Ghana beyond aid. Our thinking was that this is the opportunity. I always use the example of Dangote. It took governmental, deliberate governmental decision mm -hmm. by the Obasanjo administration to make Dangote what it is today. Government says the banking cleanups, the banking sector cleanup will help us. No, have you noticed? You, you, have you, you, noticed, you disagree no, with have it? You that noticed it that? It's going to draw back have you Ghana beyond that? Have you noticed that? This particular governor of Bank of Ghana, all he had been doing is to talk down on the financial sector. If you tell me today that by uh, February 2020, mm -hmm. I'll be coming to the rural banks. Effectively, what you are telling ordinary Ghanaians is that begin to run on the various rural banks because the BOG is coming there. And so which bank all over the world mm -hmm. can we stand a run on it? No bank. Okay. Not even the traditional bank. Thank you. But even before I end, no, 30 seconds. No, 30 seconds. Oh, 30 seconds. Oh, you just, have ended. Just 30 seconds. See, Richard seconds. is looking at you. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. You know, our <laughs> minister, you know our minister of transport yes. had terminated the appointment. But you see, you cannot persons. be injecting subject we don't have time for. So I, please, I, I you can't do that. I, I don't you know what he's that. going to talk about. Yes, you can't do that. We don't have time. I've not even come. No, no, no. I don't know what he's going to talk about. Focus on the subject at hand. If you introduce that, we don't have time for that to react. No, I want to Let's, let's, okay. allow, let's, allow, <laughs> let's allow Auntie to talk. Okay. Auntie. In, in all this, in all this discussion about <laughs> Introduce the a new financial, we don't have time. <laughs> financial sector cleanup, <laughs> we are yet to hear from the Bank of Ghana okay. that heads have ruled, that some people have been exactly. you my, know, my question interdicted. The, the Bank for, of Ghana governor roles. said that by December we'll hear of prosecutions. Well, it, it must be fast coming. It, 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 it must be fast coming. Well, but he told us exclusively on TV3 that Very by December we're going to see prosecutions. Why is it taking so long? I, I mean, I they detected know. this thing before handling the, the issues exactly. with the financial sector. It should have come out by now. Ad hoc. Because at the end of the day, we, we, we are being told by the Institute of Auditors that they have penalized and fined four um, auditing firms okay. for their various roles in um, the, 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 the cleanup. Okay. So I'm asking, what next? Mm. Is it going to affect the finality of those um, uh, uh, the financial institutions, those mm. banks, mm. that these auditors were supposed to have massaged? Uh, uh, figures or whatever you want you understand so you. there are so many things that we, we, we is this asking. cleanup going to draw back the Ghana beyond aid agenda like it is, is suggested well um, the Ghana beyond aid agenda um, critically is for us as okay. Ghanaians to be able to to walk around with it we have to build it we have to to be able to be uh, uh, active proactive okay but this is a situation where our banking sector is in turmoil it's now controlled See, the, by the financial capital. situation yeah, on the allow, ground. Allow, allow. The financial situation on the ground is such that you cannot say that people are going to grow businesses now, <laughs> because lots of people were dependent on these microfinance companies. Right. Because most of our people do not earn that much to go to conventional banks and okay. stuff like that. Okay. But the way it is now, businesses have slowed down. So I don't see how we're going to actually get results for this Ghana beyond aid. Thank you, madam. Do you uh, have any, any second for me? Oh, well, More loans. One second. Yes, one second. Put, put Yes, no, just to clarify. Is it, is it when, when, no, 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 they are not able to offer. The only thing okay. they know uh, is to enable... Okay. So but, but, but you are pumping money to recapitalize no, banks. No, no, anyway. but but, uh, thank you, what Richard Ayaba. He is a deputy communications no, manager uh, for the no, NPP. Lawyer Eduji Tamaklo is a member of the NDC's communication team. And Madame Rodling uh, Imo Rayana is a former executive of the Convention People's Party. Professor Akil Akwasoya is 80. Happy birthday to him. And, okay. okay, and uh, we're told that... Uh, the,
Exactly. There's a public lecture happening in his honor and a photo exhibition and artistic performance to celebrate uh, the legendary Professor Akilak Basoya. It's happening on Thursday, tomorrow, at September 5 and uh, Friday, September 6, 2019, at 4.30 p.m. each day at the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. We're celebrating his, him because he's done very well for all of us. I remember the uh, Nkrumah Colloquium, uh, he was the man in charge.